Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the YouTube channel Nonconformist Conscience and also the webpage Nonconformist Conscience. So I did the written report. I posted it today. Usually I post it on Tuesdays. My apologies. Wind here in Oklahoma and wildfires has been crazy and my internet has been going in and out. So today it's been doing okay. So I apologize for those who read the report faithfully that it came out today instead of yesterday. Today we have a full moon happening in the sign of Libra. And there's a lot to talk about here. I want to break down this full moon for everyone and the other transits that are happening while this full moon is occurring. So a couple of things. First off, a full moon, for those of you who are, who are new to astrology, happens when the moon is opposing the sun. And so it happens once a month. And it also correlates to culminating emotional dynamics. The moon symbolizes and reflects the emotional dynamics and the moon becoming full, being illuminated within the light of the sun is really speaking to the illumination of the culmination of the emotional dynamics. So what emotional dynamics are culminating and surfacing and being illuminated by the sun? Well, it's Libra. So we are dealing with a variety of emotional dynamics pertaining to relationships. And it is Libra. So it is a relationships of all kinds. It's a plethora. So for some... And this is going to be more felt by people who have this happening or touching at a specific point in their own natal chart. So this full moon is happening at 16 degrees Libra. So if you have something at 16 degrees Libra or 16 degrees Aries, you are going to be feeling this. So... Libra is, there's a misconception about Libra that it means that it's balanced. And I love that Jeffrey Wolf Green has talked about this. This is like in cookbook astrology, like the generalization that Libra means balance. And it, it doesn't. I have a Libra moon. I know all about this. <laughs> it means that you're learning balance. And it means that on this full moon, for those of you that are really feeling the energies of this, maybe you are more um, empathetic, more uh, sensitive to energy, or you have these aspects transiting in your own natal chart and aspecting something in your own natal chart. You're really going to be feeling this. This will speak and touch home for you. So I'm not going to pussyfoot around anymore. Here we go. Libra is about coming into balance within relationships. So that means that there can be imbalances that are surfacing and being illuminated now for some of us in regard to our relationships, whether that be family, friends, work, or our more intimate relationships. So what are the imbalances that could be surfacing? Well, it has to deal with these kind of Libra dynamics of codependency, enmeshment, um, self-abandonment, not listening to oneself. And so what this means is that for some there can be this feeling of 
understanding that an imbalance is being created or has been created in one of your relationships. And that could be because you're being codependent or it could be because maybe you're externalizing your own needs instead of being more Taurian and being self-reliant. This full moon is ruled by Venus and Taurus. And Venus and Taurus really is wanting us to get in touch with our own self-reliancy in order to have healthy self-esteem. So for some people, they are really understanding as these emotional dynamics surface where their self-esteem lies, where maybe they're externalizing their needs instead of being able to meet them themselves and be self-reliant. This full moon can really illuminate where it is that maybe for some, they aren't having time for themselves because they're doing for others instead of being able to meet their own needs. So they're feeling value for meeting other people's needs. That's where they're gaining their value is I, you know, I've seen this so much in mental health. I don't feel a value except for when I'm helping others, right? So it's like this need to understand these emotional dynamics as they surface and have the willingness to be honest with oneself. And that comes from this moon is not only opposing the sun and Aries, but it's opposing Jupiter, which is conjunct the sun. So there's a need to really be honest with oneself and to be authentic. Jupiter and the sun are ruled by Mars and Cancer. And so that means that there's this exploration that needs to happen of our emotions. What constitutes inner security? Cancer. How do we emotionally validate ourselves? Are you externalizing it? Are you seeking emotional validation outside of yourself and not being able to emotionally validate yourself? And so there's a need to really dive into the emotional body with this energy. If you are feeling imbalances within your relationships, we can even look at the work function. Maybe in work, you are constantly keeping yourself busy while abandoning your own needs. You're doing X, Y, and Z because you keep getting asked by your boss and you're not able to say no. So you're not having a healthy boundary, which is also another archetype of Libra. So there's this need to really look at how this is emotionally affecting all of us and how it constitutes where we are getting our emotional validation and if we are externalizing our security instead of finding it within ourselves. Mars in Cancer is trying the south node in Scorpio, which is ruled by Pluto in Aquarius. So Mars trining this south node is really speaking to, okay, this full moon, the days prior, the days after, you are really understanding the emotional imbalances within relationships that are creeping up, that are surfacing, that are being illuminated. And so there is a call to really understand the why. That is the south node in Scorpio. And so it is jumping into the emotional body, Mars in Cancer, and then analyzing why that is. It's also analyzing what constitutes security and doing that deep Plutonian scorpionic work of wanting to understand what constitutes security for most people. And this is yet again, another Jeffrey Wolf Green teaching is security and power, both Scorpio 
is coming from a place of what is known and familiar. And so there's a need to look at and to understand what is known and familiar. And with Pluto being the ruler of the South Node that the that Mars is trining is really looking at our conditioning around that. How have you been conditioned to get your needs met? There's that Jupiter being pulled into this mix with it being in opposition to the moon. So there's a need to be very honest with oneself as we're doing Pluto and Aquarius and objectifying our emotional dynamics in order to penetrate and get to the bottom of them to understand the why. So that can be really scary for a lot of people because no one wants to look at themselves and think that they're part of the problem, right? Like that's the thing about evolution is you've got to be able to be willing to like have humility and be like, I've made choices that have led to this situation. So what's my part? And this is perfect because Ceres is in Virgo and is in conjunct this uh is in conjunct Jupiter. So there is really this need to enact essential humility and to be honest with oneself with that in conjunct happening while this full moon is occurring in Jupiter in conjunct Ceres. Ceres is ruled by Mercury, which is conjunct the North Node. It's now in Taurus. So Ceres and Virgo is also about really understanding these kind of habitual relational dynamics or like whenever you get into a karma loop, like, oh my gosh, I thought that like I was over this. Why is this occurring again? This can be a Virgo kind of phenomenon. And it really is implying, you know... the need to readjust and realign oneself in order to purge those dynamics. And that can only be done by really getting to the bottom of the why, which is why we have Mars trining that south node in Scorpio, ruled by Pluto and Aquarius in order for us to liberate from our own status quo of how we have done relationships in the past where we've perpetuated imbalances by recreating the same familiar and known dynamics within our relationships pluto is ruled by uranus and taurus so doing this deep work and objectifying our emotional dynamics as they surface and we are understanding the imbalances that are being created we get to have the internal transformation of how we're inwardly relating and through inwardly relating in a very radically altering that that allows us to then do partnership very differently from here on out but it's not going to happen unless you become aware and awareness begats transfer transformation. It's the first step of transformation. So other dynamics that can be surfacing for some during this full moon period is Venus is sextile Neptune, which is also opposing Ceres and Virgo. And so this can be very much understanding where we've abandoned ourselves and our own values and our own needs because we are wanting to get along to get along in relationships because that's known and familiar and so we're only wanting to do the neptune or piscean kind of thing and look at the potential of the situation instead of doing the natural expression of it and honoring the truth of it so there's a need to really honor the truth of this situation that we're all in and to really objectify why we have essentially allowed that to occur and take responsibility for it in order to gain self-sufficiency in order to have a healthy relationship with ourselves, thus perpetuating that radical alteration of how we're inwardly relating. This is also for some being able to apply new values 
that are more natural and seeing the imbalances and the distortions of conditioned values and needs that actually perpetuate codependent or enmeshed behaviors like this, I'll love you if, instead of I love you just for you. With Mercury and Taurus right now and being a big part of this conversation during this full moon, there is this need to really come to an understanding of how we're feeling. Taurus is our feeling nature, whereas Cancer is our emotional nature. So there's a little bit of a difference there. But feeling is the first thing that happens to get to the emotions, right? And so with Mercury in Taurus, for some, there can be this feeling of inertia of being thrown back in on themselves. Like, I don't know how to express myself. I have a child who has Mercury and Taurus and when they're speaking about their emotions or how they're like the feelings that stem from the emotions, sometimes they can just draw a blank because they need to go back in in order to feel where that's coming from. And so Mercury and Taurus is really wanting us to stabilize and ground ourselves so that way we can express what we're coming to understand. And that means taking it slow, Taurus, in order to stabilize whenever an imbalance has been created within relationships, we are really needing to come back into our center and to ground ourselves in order to tap into what is this that I'm feeling? So like for people who experience anxiety, they can sometimes not understand the triggers around their anxiety and something that is taught within mental health practices is to really like close one's eyes and ask oneself what it is you're feeling. Oh, my tummy's in knots. What does that make me feel like though? I, I feel like a little kid. Oh, what age was I? I feel like I'm five. Well, how'd you feel at five? And so it's really pulling back the layers of the onions. So this Mercury and Taurus is really helping us in a beneficial way. It's also sextile Mars. So it's helping us ground in the body and understand our emotions. And then from the trine, from Mars to the South Node, we can really get to the bottom of where this is arising and stemming from. And through that, we are able to continue this journey of relating to ourselves on a very different way, in a way that we haven't done prior. This is also about tapping into how you feel in order to be able to express oneself. This is a Libra full moon. So we can be talking about boundaries. So I want to talk a little bit about that as well. I hear so often clients will talk about, I gave this person a boundary and they didn't follow it. And I'm really upset. So there is this huge misconception around boundaries. Boundaries really aren't for other people. That's also externalizing. The boundary lies within you, not the other person. So Boundaries create inner security, which is what this full moon, it's part of this full moon of what we're trying to explore here on a collective level, is how to understand inner security. So whenever I understand myself, and I'm learning to emotionally validate myself, and I'm in relationships with people, like I had a friend one time who told me that someone was talking bad about me or something like that. And I told her, I was like, I don't want to hear about that. Like, I don't care about that. Like, it hurts me to hear that. And I don't want to hear that because I don't, it's not that I don't care about that other person. It's just that person wasn't my friend and it's none of my business what they feel about me, you know, like, um, and so I stated that boundary. She totally 
acknowledged it and was cool with it. Had she not been, though, the boundary lies within me. Then I've got to make a decision. Do I really want this person to be my friend? If I state a boundary and they're not willing to honor that. So that is what it means that the boundary lies within you. We aren't using boundaries to control people because that's when we get into codependency because it's creating your that's where we're externalizing our security. If you follow this, then I'll feel secure. No, I state my boundary because that helps me inwardly validate myself and helps me maintain my inner security. I'm not externalizing it. That also means whenever I say a boundary and someone doesn't want to honor that, then I have to make a choice. It's up to me to make the choice. It's not up to the person that you state a boundary to, it's up to you. The boundary lies within you. And that is really important. The reason why I bring it up is it's really important. There's so much coming up with this Libra full moon around boundaries. And it's a very good Jupiter teaching of the boundary lies within you, especially Jupiter is like opposing this full moon as well. And so I felt like this was very pertinent to talk about. So Mercury is also conjunct the North Node while square Pluto and Aquarius. This is going on while this full moon is occurring. What this to me reflects is when we are able to dive into the emotional body and to do this inner work of emotional exploration and being honest with oneself, moon opposing sun and Jupiter around where our wounding has occurred. That's also opposing Chiron, all ruled by Mars in Cancer, which is trining the South Node in Scorpio. When we dive into the emotions after we realize that an imbalance has been created or an external event is being triggered through the course of the energetics of this full moon, helping us realize where these imbalances within our relationships are occurring, we get to not only learn how to emotionally validate ourselves by diving into the emotions and feeling it to heal it, we get to understand and get to the bottom of why. Where have we been conditioned in our past to get our security? How have we learned to get our emotional security within our relationships? Through understanding that with the South Node, we then get to liberate from this. And then Pluto and Aquarius have the radical alteration of how we're inwardly relating, Pluto being ruled by Scorpio. But with Mercury being conjunct the North Node and square Pluto and Aquarius, through diving through the, to the emotional body and doing this self-exploration of really analyzing and observing this in order to come into awareness, then we get to assimilate how we're feeling in a very new way. And we get to make a new choice, Mercury, about how to go about learning more about ourselves. That is Mercury square Pluto. And then there's a choice to have a conversation or to make a choice to learn more about ourselves. There's a choice to liberate from our past thinking, especially if there's projection going on within our relationships, Pluto square Mercury, Pluto being an Aquarius. So there's this need to really be observant of whether or not we're projecting, if we're getting mixed up with fact or opinion, and also really grounding into ourselves and allowing ourselves to be able to express what is necessary and to make the choice, Mercury conjunct the North Node, to further explore how to be self-reliant. That way we can continuously make the choice to challenge our inner status quo. Mercury conjunct the North Node, square Pluto and Aquarius. So I hope that helps kind of break down what is going on during this full moon. 
you know, Mars is not only still trying the South Node, it's also trying, it's making a grand trine with Saturn as well. So really understanding our emotional dynamics not only helps us to liberate, but we get to understand more about what natural values are and we get to dissolve old illusions and delusions around conditioned values that's very much Saturn and Pisces it's revolving around all of our conditioning and where we might have held on to illusions revolving around how we've been conditioned so that can be for some people during this full moon really understanding the difference between unconditional and conditional love the illusions of perfection what is a perfect relationship versus what is just like a healthy relationship what's like a norm that goes on in in a healthy relationship but through this exploration of understanding our emotional dynamics and getting to the bottom of it we also get to not only dissolve old conditioning saturn and pisces we get to implement and clear out space within to implement new values that are natural and in alignment with ourselves that is a catalyst for not only how we inwardly relate, but it's a catalyst for doing relationships with others in a very different way. I think a lot of us have experienced kind of this phenomenon in the past. You know, Saturn returns have this way of kind of just coming full force and like everything burns to the ground, right? Like your world is rocked because it's all about your conditioning. Um, and really having this choice of, do I conform? to what I've been conditioned or do I start to think for myself that is definitely kind of a Saturn return phenomenon and the reason why I bring this up is Saturn and Pisces is really wanting us to create new foundations that are more in alignment with our own natural state of who we are so a lot of us are recovering this Saturn and Pisces can also be really understanding that just like with our Saturn returns sometimes like we decide like I have way different values than the people that I've hung out with my whole entire life up until this point maybe I have different values and needs than my my friends my family whomever maybe I don't really want to have this job anymore during a Saturn return. This is a time period right now that can feel almost that vibe of if we are consciously working with swimming in the ocean of evolution instead of trying to go against the current, our values and our needs can change at a rapid pace. That means that we can experience more imbalances within our relationship because maybe we're still holding on to the security of that relationship, even though values are not aligning anymore. And so there can be choices that can surface for us to make, just like for some during a Saturn return, we decide, eh. I want all new friends or I want to change my career. Maybe I don't want to talk to my family anymore. There's all kinds of things. So some of this can be coming up. And so the key is to really honor the truth. When you have Saturn and Pisces ruled by Neptune, who's also in Pisces, that is sextiling Venus and Taurus during this full moon, there can be choices that need to be made, especially Mercury ruled by that venus that's pulling in the neptune there can be choices needing to be made revolving around who we want to be in relationship with there's also choices around learning the ability to give supreme forms of giving libra libra wants to give 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 but sometimes giving and giving isn't the best thing, not in that way. Sometimes we have to make a choice to honor our relationship with ourselves and to appear to not give to someone anymore. That is making a choice. I'm saying no because I feel like it's really going to help you in the long run. 
And if I continue to do what I've always done and not hold this boundary that's residing within myself, I'm not only getting in the way of my own evolution, but I'm getting in the way of yours because I'm not giving you an opportunity to even change or to evolve out of that because I'm still doing the same thing. So there's a variety of things that can be coming up and arising right now. But the key is with all of this Taurus stuff and a Libra full moon is to listen. There's a need to listen to your own inner voice, to honor it, and to listen to where another person is coming from instead of projecting what you think that they need. So if we can honor the truth, we can then make a choice that really aligns with our own values and that can remain in our own integrity and where we can still remain self-sufficient by not ex externalizing our value by doing for others or also allowing someone else to externalize their value on us. That, that creates an imbalance. That's not equanimity within a relationship. So a lot of these types of things can be surfacing right now and culminating in order for us to understand it. And it's really about honoring you. You know, at the end of the day, honoring the truth and honoring you. As we are evolving, our relationships are either going to evolve with us or you know, they fizzle out and that's okay. So I hope everyone has a deeper understanding about this full moon and what can be arising. Just to reiterate, boundaries are something that actually creates safety whenever they are honored. When someone isn't honoring a boundary, that's really not respecting you. And that's why I say that the boundary lies within you. We don't impose a boundary. We state a boundary. But the boundary is never for someone else. The boundary always lies within you. And it's very important for everyone to understand that during this full moon if you are experiencing dynamics within relationships. And with Mercury and Taurus, understanding that it might take time to assimilate or to really understand what it is that you're learning about yourself and being able to formulate the words to express it, that's would be very normal at this point in time with Mercury and Taurus. So give yourself grace and give yourself compassion as you are self-exploring and diving into your emotions as a way to be able to really learn how to emotionally validate and learning how to become self-sufficient and learning about your own uh, what constitutes your own security? This is a really powerful time. We're in an eclipse, you know, we're about to hit eclipse season. And April 19th, we have an eclipse coming up. And so it's really important for everyone who likes to consciously utilize astrology. If you are feeling this, be observant objectify and transformation will come but you have to be self-honest and you have to ride the fear of exploring emotions because that can be terrifying for people especially while Pluto is still square these nodes Pluto's an Aquarius that can be very terrifying for some people Mars is in Cancer there are Pluto just came out of Capricorn. There are a lot of people who have really suppressed how they've been feeling for a very long time. And there is a call now to dive into those emotions and to really be able to liberate from emotional dynamics that have been conditioned upon us. Like how we meet our needs is conditioned 
it revolves around what you chose to be born into and the conditioning factors of when you were younger. Also where you've lived, who you've been around. And so now is the time to really get curious about why do I do this? Why do, what constitutes my emotional security? Where do I feel a value in the world? Am I externalizing it? Or am I getting this from myself? If you aren't getting it from yourself, this full moon, you're going to be feeling the effects of it. Things will be triggered as a way for readjustment to occur, for realignment, to come back into balance. And so ground yourself in the exploration of diving into that emotional nature that all of us have and have the willingness to meet yourself with honesty and forgiveness and compassion and know that like that Maya Angelou quote, when you know better, you do better. And this is a full moon that can really speak to that. So I will be back next week to talk more. And um, I know that I post on the EA Zoom channels. I don't always post on there. If you are wanting to view videos every week, you can go to my YouTube channel, Nonconformist Conscience, I will have it posted so you can follow it or subscribe to it. Um, and yeah, this these are really powerful times. And like Pluto and Aquarius, there can be a, a tremendous amount of fear. And I've said it in the past. You'll hear me say it again if you listen to my videos. Mike Tyson has this incredible quote. And it was, you can't get rid of the fear, but you can ride it. And boy, like for those who are afraid to feel their emotions, you are not going to be able to get rid of that fear, but you can ride it. And guess what? That becomes the new status quo of being able to feel, being able to explore the emotions. So get after it. So much transformation can occur. So much liberation can occur right now. And this is a time to really dive in and to understand oneself on a level that you haven't before. I will see you all next week.